short video on making round objects with 3d printed seams it seems to be problems that we're having making round objects and the seams um, not being pretty pretty for a print even if you're gonna place the object towards the back um, at least the seams should be somehow pretty on a 3d print and I think um, showing the conventional way of making round objects, I guess uh, we're just going to select the plane, uh, create a new sketch. And if I now just quickly, quickly want to create a, a new um, round object, I just um, use the... Uh, just the drawing tool so I can say okay the height let's say for the test is uh, 20 uh, millimeters and uh, radius let's make it 10 so it's going to be um, well let's make it 15 so it's uh, quite um, quick to to print and on this I mean we can't do anything with it I would then just create a, another square on that and this would be then um, depending on um, how thick I want the material. So it's going to be also 20 millimeters high. And the material, let's say, is going to be 1.2 millimeters thick. So that's the wall that I'm going to work with. So and after I create that, I finish my, uh, my sketch. And if I then uh, select this part and just um, re revolve tool then I can say on which axis I think this is all clear and I create a new object at 360 degrees so of course it touches each other and if I click OK I've got a perfectly round um, body there's so whichever direction I put at the back of the 3d printer the um, the 3D printer will then um, um, create um, create for us then the um, this this um, you know the seam wherever it feels like let's say it like that wherever it feels like. So if we now remove that body and we activate the sketch again and we create again the same body, so exactly the same. So we've got two now. But on this one, um, we are just going to try something. So let's place it at the top. And let's orientate ourselves. Let's just see if this is going to work. So let's create here at the top a um, new sketch. Let's move this down. Then we're just going to give ourselves a guideline to find this top over here so that we have some kind of orientation. And here at the top, we are just going to make a little nodgy uh, so that we can place this on the 3D print. Oh, no, no. So we're not going to make a notch. We are actually going to extrude here at the top. So the wall was 0 0.1 millimeters thick. So let's do this 0 0.4 millimeters. Oh, that's a bit small. Four, make this eight. Like that. Let's finish the sketch. And then we are going to extrude this negative 20. So now this body has got this groove in to force the 3D printer to create some kind of seam over here. And we will, of course, place that at the back of the printer or facing backwards. So and the print setting saying that it has to create the seam uh, towards the back. Then the third body that I would like to test if we activate the sketch again is to work with sheet metal and I really prefer working with sheet metal I think sheet metal is um, makes life so much easier I'll show quickly why so if I select um, this um, 
this this wall let's just quickly edit this to make sure that it is also going to work for us so it has to be a solid line so i'm going to select one of these lines go on sheet metal and create a flat plane okay that's not going to work so let's create a new sketch um, a new sketch there we go so same same specs as what we have here just gonna make a square 20 by 15 and then this line over here I'm gonna make a solid line and finish my sketch that's actually all that I have to do if I'm working with a um, with sheet metal then I'm going to select the solid line and say it's a sheet metal. If it wants to create a sheet metal, oh, there we go. And the distance is going to be 0 0.1. We just want to create a small little body that we can work with. Okay, so there we created our little sheet metal piece. Now, the cool thing of it is to make the... Um, the walls thicker we can uh, go into sheet metal rules and edit the sheet metal rule so at the moment the wall thickness is set to 0 0.1 so let's make that also 1.2 and it automatically creates it so we'll show see a little bit later what advantages have we have with it because in the other options the two options we have to create or we have to go back into the sketch, edit the, the drawing, and hope it will work then. Um, so this is, uh, you know, everything that we add to it, that it's going to be hooked to the object. So when we make it bigger or smaller, that it will still work. So, and now, since we have a sheet metal body, we can then go and do, use the same tool like before. Um select the axis of course we need to say in which way it has to rotate so i'm going to use this axis and because we created a little bit of the body already um, that's why it's showing up red logic because it is now cutting into the body we're not going to say cut we're going to say join and if we would now say join then we will find one part of the print of the body has got a little uh, seam already on it okay so that's something that we can um, then also test for the for the print so again this one body one it's got zero in it nothing no seam number two has got this cutout groove that we're going to test and the sheet metal has created it because of the way that we have to create a sheet metal okay now the big advantage for me and the business that i run why create round objects uh, why i love using a uh, sheet metal if i go now back into the um the, the the cylinder that we created and i reduce it down to let's say 59.5 degrees a little bit less let's do three so we want this gap in the middle. We don't want it to touch each other. So there we can see they are not touching. I still have this cavity in between. Now on this side where the seam is or that first body that we created on the inside, I'm going to extrude the 0 0.1 millimeter or less. Not that we are touching the other side. There we go. So we don't want to touch the other side. There still has to be a minute little cavity inside of it. And now I select this body, this, this extruded part. And we are going to go in sheet metal and say that we would like to unfold. And it's going to ask us the bend that we want to create it on. So this green part is the bend that I want to unfold. I click OK. And now we can see I've unfolded the body. Okay. 
So what is cool about this part is I can now, of course, go and say insert a um, DXF with a shape that I want to cut out. I can, of course, also go myself and say create sketch. Then I create a circle somewhere. Um, let's just make a circle there. I can uh, create text on my body. So let's use the text tool. So I want to use it over the whole part. And um, let's write my name. Make it 10 millimeters high. Looks good to me. Important is if you create text on a body, especially for 3D printers, that you use something like Arial uh, Black. If you just use Arial, it's a very thin line. It can be that the, if it's if it's small, that the printer doesn't print it nicely. I personally like um, this one, something fat, um, easy for the printer to print. Click OK. Then you go on your writing, right click. Um, OK, let's finish this sketch and go back into the sketch, onto the writing. And we want to um, explode text. So it will change it so it's extrudable. And now we just finish it. So now I've created all of this stuff in my unfolded cylinder. I can now go onto my text for the 3D print, select the, if it would work, select the letters and say extrude that 0 0.6 millimeters. So I've got as we can see the text on the object. If I activate the sketch, of course, we still have our cylinder here. I'm just going to extrude two millimeters so that we definitely cut through. Now I've got a hole inside the body just for fun. And once we are finished with this, like I said, I mean, we can even go there and say extrude minus two uh, to create a hole in it or uh, import the SVG DXF uh, file to create or cut out whatever we want. And once we are finished, there's a button up here called refold face and we just refold the object. And there we go. There is the cylinder. Now we are going to go and change or make this still one piece. So we're just going to go not on the extruded part, but on the opposite part, select the inside face, extrude it till it is touching the other side. So it wants to cut, but we're not going to cut. We're going to join it. Okay. And now we can see at the back, we've got this straight seam. This is not round. This is, this is going to be straight printed. The printer sees that as a straight line. And since I'm going to place that at the back, uh, I normally don't have a problem with this. But what we can also see is our writing now on the cylinder. So they, that's what it will look like. There's the hole. And again, what I really um, like about the um, sheet metal, especially if you make these holes um, deep enough, so your cutout is deep enough. If I now go back to the uh, sheet metal and I go to sheet metal rules with all everything that I created on here and I edit my sheet metal rule and I say no I don't want this um, 0 0.2 I want this um, sorry 1.2 I want this 1.8 millimeters thick and I click save we just saw it it went bigger okay so there we can see this is one point 1.8 millimeters now, but nothing has changed. My um, my text is still the same. The hole is still there. Everything is still the same. Or I can, of course, go back into it, into the sheet metal rule and also say, no, you know what? This is too thick. I don't want to waste so much material on this. Let's just make this 0 0.8. And nothing has changed on the cylinder. So it still stays the same. So if I print something in 0 0.8 and I think, oh, it's too wobbly, it's too soft, I need to increase it, it's super easy because I just go into this um, object, create the, um, the sheet metal thickness and it creates it. So the next step, what I'm going to do is print 
these um, three together. I'm not going to print them separately. Um, with this one's going to be easy. The text has to be in the front to place it. This one is going to be easy because we've got this cut out cavity part that we can uh, place at the back. And number one doesn't matter because the printer or the slicing software is going to generate it itself. And then I will show you the results um, after it's been printed.